you will recall that on 2nd of January 2020, I warned Kenyans that His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta was the biggest existential threat of Kenya's 2010 constitution, democracy and economy, and that he was using the Right Honorable Raira Odinga as a special purpose vehicle for his plan to retain power directly or indirectly. Two years later, the events that have occurred demonstrate that what I said has come true. His Excellency President Kenyatta has been fueling and conducting a coup against the 2010 Constitution through building bridges or BBI in full violation of the oath of office that he, he took that he will obey, preserve, protect and defend this Constitution of Kenya. He has been uh, assaulting democracy and shown scorn for the rule of law, including blatant uh, disregard of court orders, viciously attacking the institution of judiciary. President Kenyatta has unleashed the Uhuru Gulag on state terror, of state terror and brutality upon the people of Kenya. He has succeeded in capturing, compromising, and weaponizing the state uh, institutions, especially police and the prosecutorial services of the Office of the Director of Pro Public Prosecutions for his own political purposes. President Kenyatta will go on, go down as the president who presided over a heavily indebted economy in the history of the country, where debt servicing takes more than two thirds of our national revenue, that is roughly or by an estimate of 1.17 trillion. Trade deficit soaring past 1 trillion. Private sector, especially SMEs, completely crowded out of credit and banks beholden to government, treasury bills and securities. This is the true legacy of President Kenyatta's disastrous presidency and not the glamorous picture he painted during his State of the Nation address uh, in Parliament and also his New Year's uh, address. I join other Kenyans in urging the judiciary to continue and sustain the momentum of implementing the, and enforcing the progressive values and principles of the 2010 Constitution. The country is at a pivotal moment where the judiciary must exercise its judicial authority derived from the people of Kenya to remain the last bastion of defending the constitution defending constitutionalism, the rule of law, and democracy. The Chief Justice must demonstrate unwavering courage and firm leadership in generously defending the independence of the judiciary and deterring any form of infringement on judicial mandate. The judiciary must come on strongly and play a crucial role in curtailing police impunity. It must not offer any safe haven or refuge, uh, refuge to police lawlessness. The IEBC, or Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, must remain vigilant in defending the space and independence of their mandate in conducting credible, reputable elections and raise the integrity bar. The general election, elections must be conducted in the most professional, transparent, and uh, accountable manner. This is a constitutional obligation. IBC must protect uh, the, uh, uh, its uh, constitutionally enshrined structure, operation, professional, and funding autonomy. It must be a commission that guarantees a situation of predictability and certainty with the Kenyan electoral process. The commission made the right decision to withdraw from the Kangaroo Consultative Committee purporting to be preparing for the general election. The committee is not only illegal and unconstitutional, but also a, mar a marionette of power barons hell-bent to manipulate the election. Having said that, I would want to encourage and urge the Honorable the Chief Justice, Mother Kome, to be courageous and reflect on her role in the said committee and the likelihood of compromise and conflict of interest 
that may be seen to occur by her continued participation in the process of, in quote, preparing for the general election, which is the mandate or a mandate of the IBC. The judiciary must remain and be seen to be a neutral arbiter by all political players. It must therefore be seen to be so. On 20th September 2017, elections are the surest way through which people express their sovereignty. Our 2010 constitution is founded upon the immutable principles of the sovereign will of the people. Therefore, whether it, it be about numbers, whether it be about laws, whether it be about processes, an election must at the end of the day be a true reflection of the will of the people as decreed by the constitution through its hallowed principles of transparency, credibility, verifiability, accountability, accuracy, and efficiency. The president could be uh, applying tactics or strategies to retain power. It's very obvious that the governance institutions have been used throughout this particular term by the state, what you know they call deep state, which is a criminal enterprise group there that wants to retain power, but they get the support and backing of the president because in this country, executive power uh, is, is retained uh, heavily by the president. The other institutions support the executive. And therefore, when you see police brutality, when you see abductions like the one uh, that uh, Dennis Itumbi suffered, when you see police disrupting peaceful demonstrations or uh, evicting people at night regardless of the weather or whether they have an alternative place to stay, when you see political parties, some selective political application of uh, police authority uh, in, in terms of uh, disruption of political activities, different political parties are given different treatment when you see some members of parliament being thrown out of, the, of their committees using the, the executive, all that is a sign that this particular executive wants to control state power now and after the elections. And of course, you have seen the same state power being used to support some candidates. And, uh, Without avoidance of doubt, it is, uh, has been demonstrated that the Right Honorable Raira Odinga, who saw himself as a president after the last general elections, is now being protected, has never been prosecuted, seemed to share a very cordial relationship with the president, who obviously, in my view, suffered a kind of a coup from Raira Odinga, but after the hardship, they seem to have exchanged some cordial relationship whose beneficiary, uh, and, and Raira Odinga has become the beneficiary. Of course, you know that uh, we have been told by some personalities working in Jubilee and working with, closely with the president, they are seen as his mouthpieces, associates and mouthpieces, that the president is too young and therefore he's going nowhere. You have also heard that they can do a kaputin. Those statements should not be taken lightly. The president has time and again come out in his military gear by way of demonstration of military power to a civilian government, sets the, long, uh, the wrong signals because this is not a a military commander. The country is not is a civilian government and therefore when you see application of military officers in civilian institutions, again you must read uh, things between the lines and you must be very careful as a country. So therefore America uh, has been a partner of Kenya in the struggle for democracy, multi-party democracy. Several ambassadors have time again and again 
spoken on the principles of transparency, uh, have uh, assisted Kenya in, uh, in trainings, in, in enforcing democracy, and speaking against abuse of power. But you, you know that uh, Biden came to office one year ago, and there has been very, very little statement, or actually none, absence of a voice from the American government, which is a major partner in our democratic processes. Uh, they seem to just uh, accept that it is okay for the office of the interior ministry to get people, lock them in on a Friday, use the KRA, use ESCC to hold and uh, arrest people, that cannot be a president who wants to finish and go.